This video was a request from someone I know. They were wondering about uh, bunker overhead cover or bunker roofs. So I did some searching. I do remember reading years ago in a book on uh, the Korean War on a better version of a roof than this. I'll go over it later. But this is what's in U.S. Doctrine for overhead cover. Now I have this kind of uh, separated out here. Your bunker is down here. Okay, this is the fighting area. So you're going to have a support structure underneath of timbers and sandbags, concrete blocks, whatever. Immediately above that you're going to have a layer, basically a laminated layer of timbers or logs. This should be at least 10 to 15 inches high. So you're going to have a line of logs, one right next to each other, going this way, and then you'll have a line going the long way across the top. Now your joints, you are going to want to, uh, especially on this layer, you are going to want to offset the stuff. So let's say you have a log this way, well, the one next to it's going to be this way, and the one in front of it's going to be this way, and the one next to it will probably be like this. You're going to want to offset your joints, try to make them stronger. Now, immediately above that, you're going to have your dust proof layer. The dust proof layer is tar paper, canvas, plastic sheeting, or tarps. That's just to keep dust from coming through, obviously, the dust proof layer. Above that, you're going to have a cushion layer that's going to be at least 12 inches of untamped earth. Just earth. No rocks, no gravel. Just earth. This is going to cushion the blast that happens above it. Above that, you're going to have the waterproof layer. And that would be a waterproof material like the plastic. Or canvas or the tarps. Probably not your tar paper. That is to keep this from getting wet, compressing, and getting hard. If this is nice and soft, it will cushion the blast that happens above it a lot more easily. Next above that is your burster layer. This is going to be rocks and earth. Now the rocks, according to the guidance, should be at least 6 to 8 inches thick. And you should overlap the layers overlap the joints so here here's a rock here's a rock you're gonna have one right above the seam above it next rock next to it and then another one right over that and you're gonna have to keep going till you get at least 12 inches thick layer and you're gonna want to add sand or gr dirt and gravel in there too this is what's going to activate the fuse on the mortar or the artillery shell. Now over the top of that you should have at least 6 inches of dirt and then camouflaging above it. Your sod blocks, your leaves, your sticks and so forth. Now according to the manual I got this from, this is supposed to withstand a direct hit from a 155 millimeter shell. Obviously only one hit. I wouldn't count on it lasting more than that. But what will happen, the round comes in, the fuse gets detonated on the rocks here. The rocks will stop a lot of the fragmentation and some of the concussion force. But a lot of that concussive force is going to come down here into the cushion. The cushion is soft. It's going to dissipate it. So that hopefully nothing comes down or very little comes down onto the timbers. One of the things I came across in the cushion layer. The reason you do not put any rocks or any gravel in here. Or any good size rocks. Is that stone transmits that concussive force a lot easier than the soft media, than that sand or that loose dirt will. So keep the rocks out of there if at all possible. Put your rocks and that stuff up in this layer. Now I did 
come across, as I said, accounts from the Korean War. Where American GIs, they would attack Chinese positions. Well, I came across a couple stories about GIs hunkering down inside Chinese made bunkers as artillery was coming in. They didn't know if it was Chinese artillery being fired to chase the Americans off or if it was American artillery that was coming in later than was expected. They weren't sure. But they said they were inside the bunkers and other than the sound they were hearing from the explosions outside, they didn't feel anything. Now I know I came across somewhere in the U.S. manual over the years a different layering system than this that's based off that Chinese system. The timbers, from what I remember, were like 10 to 12 inches thick and they were laminated like this. You would have your dustproof, waterproof layer. You would have your cushion layer that would be at least a foot. And then this burster layer was like three to four feet in depth. You had really large rocks, or as we used to call them in the military, your BFRs, your uh, big fracking rocks. Underneath that, you'd have your uh, rocks that are about the size of a person's head. Below that, you had a layer of rocks that were about the size of your fist. And below that was gravel and smaller stones. That was able to take a considerable amount of force. It was able to dissipate it. That very top back to rocks detonates the fuse, stops most of the uh, direct explosive force and the fragmentation, and then it just keeps getting passed out, dissipated as it goes down. So that the people inside, they felt nothing. It didn't rock their world or anything. But uh, this is for a fighting bunker. And that Chinese style, I say that would be more of, say, over the top of some type of survival bunker or a bomb shelter for consideration on how you're going to layer the soil above it to give you extra protection, give you extra mass from either bombs falling or from nuclear radiation, depending on the purpose of your bunker. All this stuff can be found in uh, U.S. manuals. I highly recommend you read into the uh, survivability field manual and also FM 5-34 engineer field data, which I think now it's something like FM 3-34, but I know you can find lots of copies under FM 5-34. You'll also find some information under the older field fortifications manual, I think that was FM 5-25. And then you would also have Army Correspondence books, which would be, I think it's uh, field fortifications. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay